And welcome back to devlog number 19. I hope you all legally acquired a probability text and are excitedly plowing through it following my previous video. So it's been a hot second between devlogs and I did not hit the demo day number 48 release. Demo day 49 looking like a whole snack dump. So what was the hang up? Navigation and the unbearable onus of my massive intellect, mainly the latter. Unreal has a robust nav mesh system, but for this spinny game, I need something that will allow for walking on the ground, along the walls and ceilings, and also flying in the air. I need something robust, and honestly, when it comes down to it, navigation or pathfinding, it's a fun challenge. So let's sink our high IQ brain teeth into it. When it comes down to it, navigation is just tree traversal and one easy geometric trick that scientists hate. We'll start with a ladder since it's just so cute. You can draw a straight line between any two points in a convex shape, either 2D, 3D, whatever. What this means for navigation is that if the start point and end point are within the same convex shape, then pathfinding is free. Just move along the straight line connecting the two. And of course, obviously the same is not true for concave shapes like this kind of bean looking thing. Hence, convex shapes are used for all nav mesh systems because it just works. Next is tree traversal. There are lots of ways to traverse a tree, either depth or breadth first, but in this house, we use A star. A star is kind of depth first, but it uses a heuristic, usually just a distance function, to weigh certain nodes of the tree higher for exploration than others. This is good for games because we want pathfinding to work quickly and with little memory usage, and the A star heuristic helps with both of those. If you want a good explanation and basic implementation, you should check out the link I have to this site in the description. It has a nice interactive example that demonstrates the step-by-step -step procedure of A star well. Also, you should check out this site, Game Dev Gaiden. I've known about it for years and it's a really great resource. It has a wide range of topics on Game Dev, so if you're interested in learning about something, it will probably have a link that helps you out. I definitely leaned on it a lot when I was first starting off and here I am now. So that's the theoretical underpinnings. And in most normal navigation mesh systems, the trick is that the convex polygons are the nodes in the tree that's being traversed. So first the navigation algorithm will find which convex polygon contains or is closest to the desired endpoint. Then it uses A star to traverse between the individual convex polygons from the starting position with the shared edges of the polygons being the edges between the nodes in the tree. Simple in theory, but I'm still extremely thankful that most editors like Unreal Engine and Unity 3D do it for you. Now, here's where my thick, heavy brain got in the way. If nav meshes are good, then of course nav polyhedra are better. Yes, I am just enough of a midwit to bite off way more than I can chew, but I gave it a good college try. And after reading dozens of academic papers, I think I have a solid idea of how to do it, but no clue nor the time to actually implement it. So I did a bunch of reading like two weeks worth of reading. And I forced myself to produce a video every fortnight. So you know what that means. I'm going to provide synopses of a bunch of papers. The first thing I did when I was researching polyhedra for navigation was looking for a convex decomposition method. And I actually found one pretty quickly. Approximate convex decomposition for 3D meshes with collision of wire concavity and tree search by Jinyu Wei et al. This is actually a goldmine because it outputs polyhedra that allows for tree search. So I reasoned that once I, one, implemented an algorithm based on their outline, then two, fed some two manifold polyhedra into it, I'd be set. Now, onto the real question. How would I generate a two manifold non-convex polygon? I of course could just do a bunch of raycasting to collect sample points or even use axis aligned bounding boxes to check for overlaps. But how could I get from that sample data to a big old polyhedra? So I hit Google Scholar. I found this amazing graduate thesis from Hanzhou Zhang, mesh generation for voxel based objects. And as you can see, it is dummy thick. But here's the trick I use to read things like these. For stuff like this, where I have a goal, I first read the abstract to check if it's relevant, then check the table of contents, and then I read backwards. First, I read the section that really interests me, and then I read the sections that explain whatever I just read, and so on and so forth. I end up ping-ponging through most of a paper that way. 
Since last time I shared my deep passion for stochastic methods, when I saw the words Monte Carlo in the table of contents, I got a big hit of dopamine. Monte Carlo methods are great. I love them. They can basically boil down to what if we guessed really fast and got it right? After all, if a computer can guess tens of thousands of times a second and frame rate really isn't an issue, then fuck it. Computer go burr. And I was bearing with it until I got to central differing scheme. I honestly don't know what that is. I was gonna have to implement an octree and a bunch of other stuff and now I'm doing how many per element operations. I liked this paper but you know I decided to keep on looking for something else. So back to Google Scholar. Eventually I found the granddaddy convex surface algorithm. The ball pivoting algorithm. Yep ball pivoting. The idea behind it is pretty straightforward. Along the growth front of a reconstructed surface, a sphere of some arbitrary radius pivots between all the sample points, connecting them with edges, hence the name. I thought that this was the algorithm, and even found some GitHub repos that I could use for uh, implementation guidance, until I saw a demo video and the problem holes. As much as I want to pivot my balls, I want a fire and forget algorithm. And holes just don't fly with the approximate convex decomposition paper I read. So I kept looking. Eventually I found the search terms that I wanted. Watertight surface reconstruction. You can toss in from point cloud data too. And there's some great stuff you can dig up on Google Scholar for free. But the more I read, the more I realized that no matter what, I'd need ground truth sample data. And that either meant voxels, points, samples, or both. So if I'm going to be getting that data, why don't I go with my initial naive idea and just use that stuff? Voxels are cubes and cubes are convex and connected points are graphs. So I could use that instead of spending weeks trying to implement some big brain algorithm. And so that's what I did. Although I think it would be cool and possibly fruitful, I'm trying to make a game here. Not some neato watertight surface reconstruction to approximate convex decomposition polyhedron navigation system. If it works and is performant, it's good enough for me. Of course, I'll include links to the PDFs I dug up in the description because, I don't know, maybe one of you will figure it out and then I'll steal it from your GitHub repo. So I did that. Of course, it's asynchronous. If you set up your pathfinding system, it better be asynchronous. Otherwise, I'll find you and I'll roast you for your frame rate drops. And you don't want that. Unfortunately, but also, expectedly, Unreal Engine's async documentation is garbage, but it's always garbage. And it's weird getting it working with promises, but as always, promises are preferable to nested callback help. I hate giving props to JavaScript, but you know what? Async and promises are easy in JavaScript. I'll probably end up making a tutorial video on how to write asynchronous code for Unreal Engine and combine that with promises because there's practically no info online aside from the docs, which as I said, are bad. And voila, I got this actor named Bruh. Bruh here just moves randomly between voxels or points or whatever I set it to. Clearly there's some overshooting and bruh ain't too accurate, but my boy is moving here. I also dicked around with post-processing because I wanted to do a little amuse-bouche easy work after all that big brain stuff. I decided to go for a stylized cell shader look similar to Killer7, but with dithering. And it's becoming pretty clear even to me, that I have a thing for dithering, don't I? And that's the video this week. Demo Day 49 is less than 30 days away, and you just know I'm gonna have a demo ready for that, especially if it's trash. As always, I appreciate your time, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. If you liked the video and wanna follow along with my zany YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. You'll get a new video every two weeks, even if it is just me summarizing a bunch of math papers. And I'd love your comments. You guys are all amazing. Keep it coming. I'm also on Twitter. I posted the first bake of the year there. Wouldn't you like to know what it is? Hmm? So I talked about guavas last time with the, uh, pre well, not last time, but previously with the guava galettes. And, you know, guavas go bad pretty quickly. So, and we had a, I had a whole bunch. So I ended up processing them down to like a, uh, kind of like a hard, really hard jam, basically. And I ended up making a, cookies with them. Uh, these are white chocolate 
guava cookies and this is a spread photo so yeah this is just as you can see there's a whole bunch and you know some people are don't like white chocolate i like it i like it i'm i'm a fan of white chocolate uh context you know i dark chocolate is definitely my favorite but i mean i'm just a big chocolate fan in general and that includes white chocolate for me so this is a uh, a modification of Tara O'Brady's chocolate chip cookie recipe. And honestly, I think I really like that recipe. Like, it's so simple. Like, these, this took like half an hour, 20 minutes to prepare all these cookies. And I get like 18. I got like 18 of them. And we'll skip ahead to the cross section. Yeah, it's not as massive as the Lavon chocolate chip Lavon cookies. But I mean, this this is just a half hour, and there's still you know I had to dial in the timing for uh, or the temperature and also the duration for the baking because you know it's white chocolate and it's got guava so it's like uh, you know it's not a perfect one to one for just chocolate but I got it pretty good so so that way you know it stays really moist like these cookies are still good the next day the. You know, and just throughout the next few days, they stay really moist on the inside. And it's not undercooked. It's moist, okay? It, But yeah, it's good. And I got so many of them. And it's so easy. Again, that's Tara O'Brady's. Let me double check that real fast, actually. Yeah, Tara O'Brady's Basic Great Chocolate Chip Cookies. And I will, of course, include a link to it in the description and yeah, it's just super easy. Um, I think it's like two mixing bowls, tops, and a pan to melt the butter. And that's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, and honestly, you know, I, I measure, I weigh everything out nowadays because I'm just like, ah, uh, why not? At, at this point, it's faster for me. So really, it's two bowls for me because I'm weighing the bowls and, you know, and that's it. So this is a super simple cookie dough recipe. And I love the Levon cookies. I love them. They take like a day to prepare. And I have to rest them overnight to get the best results. <laughs> so these? And I like, plus if I eat one of them, I'm just, I'm taking a nap afterwards. <laughs> but this, this is a good recipe. This is a great recipe. I really like this recipe. And I'm going to be cooking these baked cookies more often. Of course, you know, the Levon cookies is still like, has a special place in my heart. But like, these are, these are nice. These are just easy. And I like it. It's a nice, easy recipe. I'm a big fan. But anyways, that's what I baked this week. And I'll probably cut some of this because I rambled. Uh, <laughs> uh. But of course, again, the link, again, the link has in the description in the link. Check it out. It's easy cookie recipe. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to sign off here. Um, the yeast in the air is free. You should go out there and bake. Uh, it's a great way to show people that you appreciate them. And I appreciate all of you. Um, I really do. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm excited for 2023 and uh last week was pretty tough for me uh, my place was getting termite tinted and i had to uh crouch surf excuse me couch surf at one of my friend's houses so and their dog um unfortunately had to be uh she she had she was very old she you know her her kidneys had basically failed so she basically had she had to be euthanized um basically a couple hours before i arrived so it was it was sad i loved that i loved i loved that dog she was very sweet but um, you know it's just tough for her at the end there of course you know i did some cooking baking with them so i mean i really appreciate my friends even though and so it was nice. I have, I baked something for them. You're gonna have you're gonna have to wait to see. You're gonna have to wait to see what it was though. <laughs> Unless you subscribe to my Twitter, then you already know. But yeah, it's a great way to show people that you appreciate them. And 
I appreciate all of you, and I hope 2023, rough start, but you can always lean on your friends and those close to you during hard times. I think we're all going to make it. Thank you, and I will see you next time.